we would like you to join us in welcoming our guest tonight, Kyle Graham. Kyle, welcome back to the show with us. Thank you, thank you. It's great to be here. It's been a while, but I'm happy to be back. Oh, you! I can't tell you, the happiness is more on our side than yours because this is going to be one geeked out show. I love it. But we're going to do this so that everyone can understand it in layman's terms. But I've seen your work. I mean, I have seen your work. I mean, down to the source code level, more than most people would ever venture. And this gentleman can put some pretty dynamic and clean code together. Uh, I come from a defense atmosphere where it's very rigid and regimented, and we have to. Uh, we're reviewed. Uh, Kyle can do it any way he wants. He chooses to do the right way. I'm so impressed by what he's done, and you, well, let's just get into it because this is going to be awesome. Uh, what Kyle has just developed, I'm so excited for him uh, and for everyone here who decides to take a, a, a serious look at what he's doing of late. Now, Kyle, the topic for tonight's show is viral marketing. Now, we hear so much about viral marketing uh, these days, and it seems rather cumbersome and difficult, actually, to do right. Is there truly a proven yet easy method by which to go about viral marketing? Um, actually, yeah, yeah. A lot of people get viral marketing wrong, um, but I, uh, over over the years, and maybe we can talk about it a little. Over the years, I've I've kind of developed a system that has actually, you know, <coughs> worked every single time I, I've I've tried it. Now, the the thing with vir with viral marketing, and we'll probably get into it in more detail, is it depends on what you define as success. Viral marketing, there's an actual officially a technical term of what viral marketing is, and a lot of people don't hit it. But even if you don't hit it, you can mu multiply your efforts by orders of magnitude um, just by trying. So my kind of my big thing is just try it because it's literally impossible to fail, and I'll explain, I'll explain why, why as, we go, as we go forward. Well, so with respect, you know, because we're talking about traffic, and this this eludes a lot of people. But um, when you're talking about traffic and lead generation, what is wrong with the traditional methods like SEO, search engine optimization, pay per click, social media, affiliate marketing, um, and why don't they work as well? Or should we switch exclusively to like viral marketing? Okay, well, <clears throat> there, there's actually nothing wrong with your traditional approaches in that they work. All, everything that you've learned about ser uh, search engine optimization, pay-per-click, they all work, but there's a couple of um, challenges with them. Uh, we've all heard of information overload and everyone's always stressed out and busy and then you hear of these people that are doing so well, you know, the four hour work week and all that stuff and we can't seem to do it. And that's because these things take a lot of time. If you're running search engine optimization, you have to set up articles, you have to do blogs um, and it's just, it, it can literally, you can literally crumble under your efforts. But the tricky part to it is that it actually does work. If you do set up your blogs and your articles and stuff, you can see traffic uh, and you can see leads and, and, and you know if you do it right. But it's, it takes a long time to do and you can mess it up. What viral marketing does, if you do it right, is it turns it on its head. You can actually um, um, leverage other people to do the same, to do those things for you. So if you create a contest or um, uh, some kind of campaign where you incentivize other people to spread the message for you, they can do your article marketing, they can tweet for you, they can blog for you, and they'll be happy to do it, and the benefits are just phenomenal when you get people to do it for you. And that's kind of the trick with viral marketing. It's not necessarily another strategy or another campaign, it's a more leveraged, uh, more, uh, 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 leveraged way to do what you would normally do. Does that make any sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah, actually. so essentially, you get you get others to be your so soldiers, if you will. Right. right. So I'll give you an example. We we ran a couple of partners and I uh, ran a campaign last year, uh, probably around last year this time, and um, we were right down to the wire. If you've ever done a product launch, you know that it can be an extremely hectic thing. And there's only like three of us working on this campaign. And so we're right down to the wire. We have to set up web pages and all this stuff. And then we, you know, actually marketing the thing was kind of like an afterthought. 
So we came up with an idea is let's um, see if we can incentivize other people to do some of this, these things for you, for us. So we found some people, some friends and stuff, and we basically gave them, you know, a cut of the deal. We gave them different incentives to help us spread. And so we found, we actually ended up getting 400 people to agree to do it, and far less people actually helped us to um, spread the message. And what happened, in fact, if you can do a search online right now, and you'll see that collectively there were, let me see if I can remember, 800,000 different Google wow. posts you can uh, actually uh, you can go to uh, Google right now and in quotations do JV attraction formula, and you'll see that there's eight um, either 200 right now, but at the time it was 800,000 different articles and uh, conversations about that term, and it all happened in less than seven days. Oh, now gosh. imagine doing it yourself. <laughs> now if you could do it yourself, you absolutely would get a lot of traffic, raise to number one on Google, but can you do that yourself? Absolutely not. Even if you had a large team that you were paying to do it, it's extremely hard to do it. But just by leveraging other people and creating a viral campaign where you incentivize people to do the work for you, you can get the same results as search engine optimization, pay-per-click, and all that stuff. So it's just a leveraged way of looking at marketing. And the thing I love about what you do, uh, Kyle, obviously, is because you're in the world of automation, and that's that's just always flipped my trigger. It's uh, yeah. It's been the code or the nut I've been trying to crack for years because when it comes down to selling anything, it truly does come down to, most often, a relationship business. And how do you automate relationships? So the way you have put this together, you can first reach out to those that you know and use them, as Kathy uh, indicated, as your army to then further spread the word. So you have other people referring you that have never potentially even met you before, but because it came from a trusted source of theirs, then it goes yeah, viral and works. Oh, it's here and stuff. It's, 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 I think, the most powerful, by far, the most powerful form of marketing because you're doing the traditional marketing things that are proven to work, but in a much higher leverage fashion. So take, for example, let's, like if you do a search on Alexa at the top 10 websites, top 10 traffic websites, you're going to see websites like Google, Facebook, and Twitter. These are, these are websites that kind of came out of nowhere and just exploded to where they have multiple millions, and they, and they turn into these billion-dollar companies, and it's driven by that single thing, um, viral marketing. And if you notice something about these companies, like go ahead and, and you know, if our listeners want to go ahead and go to Alexa and look at, the, and look at these people, you'll see that they don't have an article marketing strategy. They don't do pay-per-click. They don't do SEO or blogs or anything like that for the purpose of traffic and lead generation. Yet they're the number one, number two hot, most traffic websites um, on the planet. And not just traffic, they're multi-multi-billion dollar companies. So they're clearly doing something better than what we're doing. And my theory, and it's pretty obvious, is that they're leveraging others to spread the word for you. They have these in, these viral systems inside of their site that will help people to spread the word, either by talking amongst themselves, spreading it outside of their platform. You know, people blog about them because of this insane viral action that's going on, and then they, it, you know, so you have something that just explodes exponentially. It's a much more it's a much more powerful way of 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 growing and building a business. Well, let's pull the curtain back a little bit here and dive in. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people are, are curious, and, and I'm biting at my tongue myself. I can't wait. What are the steps involved in actually creating and executing a successful viral marketing campaign? Okay. Well, I've broken it down into four simple steps, and this is really what it comes down to. And each of these steps are very, very deep and very powerful. And you can find these four steps in every single viral campaign um, on the planet. Hmm. Um, now, I'll just before I get into them, I'll just kind of share how I arrived at these steps, and then you know, it'll take about a minute, but it'll make sense. Oh, that'd be so, awesome. So it, it started like maybe um, in two thousand and nine, in two thousand and eight, actually. My first project was Twiklix, and basically, I created this um, this product without any thought to how I was going to market it. And at the last minute, I said, "Hey, let's give away this product for free, but let's only or or let's." After they um, after they get into the product, we're going to ask them to share um, the product with other people on Twitter. So we created something that allows people to share the product on Twitter. So a very simple viral campaign. And so what happened is almost by accident, just by putting that in, 
we balloon to 77,000 visitors per month just by wow. allowing people to share it with other people. And now this wasn't something that I intentionally engineered. There were no other marketing strategies that I did. It was kind of luck of the draw by putting this in and it spiraled out of control. So that got me down this path of viral, mar of viral marketing. So right after that, a lot of people were like, oh, how did you do that? How do you do that? So we built a software that allowed people to do that. Um, and that was called Viral Tweets. And that was the next thing we did. We launched it the same way. We said, hey, in order to get this product, we want you to spread it. And then when you spread it, you'll get it. Now that went out of control um, as well. And that grew, uh, we were the number one most tweeted um, link on Twitter for that day. And we built an entire business off of that single viral tweet. Amazing. Then moving on, we did that project that I just talked about where we got those people to give us 800,000 800, posts just by asking them to. <laughs> and then a couple months ago, we did it again with um, um, a, a software plugin called VoicePress using the same strategy. Here you can have it, just spread it to other people. And that has gone crazy. And, and, and um, you know, we have thousands of people that have downloaded that. Now, all of that didn't have any type of traditional marketing strategy. It all ran on autopilot because we just simply incentivized other people to do it for, for us. Now, through those four experiences, I, you know, just kind of astonished by the results myself, I started to codify what we did that went, that was right. And, I, and now I can break it down into these four simple strategies and every single time you apply it, you're going to see measurable results. So if you have a pen, I, I definitely encourage you to write it down. <laughs> We're ready. <laughs> Better believe We're ready. It's, kind of, it's kind of your roadmap to creating viral campaigns. So anyway, I'll jump into it. The number one thing is to have a strong incentive, a strong incentive when, um, when you're running a viral campaign because you have to give people a reason to spread your message. So like the last one we did was uh, this, a plugin called VoicePress. It helps people to um, dictate their WordPress posts using um, voice recognition. Um, wow. So it was, a, it, was a, it was kind of a novel thing. It was something that people really um, liked the idea of. And we said, here, we'll just give it to you for free, but spread it first. Now we can talk about how you can monetize these mm -hmm. things later, but the idea is you give someone a strong incentive um, to spread your message. Number two, you have to have you need to have a strong catalyst, and what that is is you need um, a lot of people, and it's actually not necessary, but it only will help if you have a lot of people to to kick off your campaign for you. So a simple thing that someone can do is you have a marketing um, a product that you want to to sell. It's of a strong it's a strong incentive, and then you want to get a bunch of your buddies to spread it, to to kick off the viral loop by spreading it for you. So you just get some of your friends and say, hey, at 3 p.m. tomorrow, I want you to send out this Twitter message, um, you know, to say, go to this, um, to go to this page and download this product or, or whatever it is, okay? So in other words, you're like enlisting an army, but a little bit smaller and kind of tight, tight to the chest, so it's your buddies, and then, and then it takes off from there? Because right. they, so if, right? Totally. So if you think of what a viral campaign is, it's like a, it's a viral expansion loop where you have some idea or some product where people come, they share it, and then more of those people come and they share it, and it kind of explodes in this, in this expansion situation. So in order to kickstart it, you, you want to have many people kickstart it. So if you think in like the offline wor world of like a traditional viral camp, a viral, what's it called, a flu or something, the more people to, to initiate the epidemic, the better you are. So, and I'm kind of tongue in cheek here, but if you wanted to like um, infect the entire world with a deadly virus, what you want to do is strategically place um, people with that virus at key components of the world, uh, in, in the world. So you want to go to the places of high distribution. You want to go to the airport. You want to go to the, um, uh, the place where they mint money, or you want to go to the water supply but you want to have a lot of people to kind of kickstart the campaign. So you and want you have, your friends sneezing all over everybody. That's the idea. In fact, that, that's the exact word I use, is you need to find some sneezers, okay? Yeah. So, and, and, that, and, and the more sneezers you have, the more chances you have of, of the virus to spread. 
So even though I talk about it in the offline and in, in the bad sense, it can work in the good sense if you strategically have, you know, sneezers and particularly people of, of high income. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> so I'll actually, ex um, here's an idea. I had a launch that I did a couple of years ago and one of the people I tapped was Brian because he had this big Twitter list um, of, I don't remember, it was a lot of people back then. And I said, hey, can you send out this tweet for me? Because I knew that if I wanted, you know, this campaign to get going, I needed people like him who had that influence to start my message. Okay. Um, another way to look at that is like your traditional affiliates. Those, if you have an affiliate, those are sneezers. Those are people who are going to spread your message. But what makes it really powerful is once the message is spread, if you can take that message and cycle it back around, um, so that those people spread. But I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> the third. <laughs> The third um, kind of component of every single successful viral campaign is the KISS principle. And I, I say it's keep it smooth and simple. <laughs> oh. Okay, keeping it smooth and simple. Obviously, the more complicated your campaign is, the, more, the less chances people have to spread it. People want, you know, it needs to be real smooth where as soon as they come in, they see something and they spread it. Um, I'm not trying to promote this, but a good example of this is the VoicePress uh, plugin. Um, if anyone goes to voicepress.it slash PWAT, that's, um, that's a campaign that I'm talking about. When people get there, there's pretty much one button they can click on. So it's a very, very simple thing. And it's also very smooth in that they want, as soon as they click on that button, a Twitter window up opens up and it basically says, hey, We'll give you this for free, just click the tweet button. They click the tweet button and they get it. So it's a very smooth and simple campaign. What was that? Had I incorporated again, other things like, oh, you can also spread on Twitter. Oh, you can also dig it. And you see those campaigns where you can do this, you can do that, you can do that, and people get, you know. Yeah, it's um, too much. Yeah, it's too much. They get yeah. paralyzed with choices. That's so you right. give them one simple choice, keep it smooth and simple, and that's going to increase the likelihood that you're going to succeed with your viral campaign. What was that URL again, uh, Kyle? Uh, VoicePress, kind of like WordPress, but VoicePress mm -hmm. dot .it. IT. So instead of dot .com, dot .it forward slash PWAT. That's pay with a tweet, so PWAT. All right, cool. I just it got... is a simple, I mean, you don't have to download the plugin, but it's, a, it's just, you know, you can spread it very, very simply. So that was number three of four, you know, vi uh, steps to successful viral campaigns. And you'll see this. You go to, you know, you see any successful campaign. If you, when you signed up for Twitter, um, they have a very successful viral loop. Um, very smooth, very, very easy to do. Uh, same with Facebook. Um, so you'll see these steps everywhere. There's a viral, um, successful viral campaign. So the last step to a successful viral campaign is really the most important. It's not viral unless the viral turns into a loop where people come, see the campaign, spread the campaign, or see the campaign, and then they have to be invited to spread that campaign. Now, the trick, the trick is you have to spread the campaign in such a way that the new visitors come to that viral campaign. Does wow. that make sense? Yes. So if you create a viral a viral campaign and you're sending people to the home page of your website, you're not completing the viral loop. And that's number four, completing the viral loop. You're just sending them somewhere else. You want to send them to the camp to the exact campaign. So you keep that loop very tight. And that's that's how you create a viral campaign. Now, the cool thing with viral campaigns is if you augment an existing marketing campaign. So here's here's an here's an example that anyone on this call can take to the bank. It will, it will work every single time you try it. Most people have um, a lead capture page on their site or a landing page, mm -hmm. some way to, to collect emails or whatever. <clears throat> if after people see that, or after people download or, or register or you know sign up for your email newsletter, you take them to one of these campaigns where you basically say, hey, to get an additional Let's say you have a free report, right? Your, your free report will tell you how to do X, Y, and Z. After they register for that report, on the other side it says, okay, we've sent you your report, but if you want the missing chapter, some missing component, we want you to tell three friends, okay? If after you tell three of your friends, we're gonna give you this missing chapter or something of greater value. 
So you might be getting 10 emails a day, 10 email opt-ins a day. As soon as you stick something like that in your, in your campaign, it's going to increase. It's not going to decrease because every one of those 10 people are now invited to share it with their friends. And that's the key with these viral campaigns is you can't lose. It can only help. So that's what I mean when I say it, it, you will always do better the more of, of these viral campaigns that you can do. So, I mean, I guess the big takeaway from this is by any means necessary, you need to augment your current marketing strategy with viral campaigns. And, yeah. and that campaign alone that I just mentioned, I've uh -huh. seen, I mean, almost out the gate, even if you mess up, can double and even triple the amount of leads that you get just by putting that in place. That's insane. Well, I just want to tell you, somebody named Lawton is saying um, to you, Kyle, sup? Sup? Hey, I know Lawton. Somebody <laughs> <laughs> asking me a question, he's saying sup. Well, well tell him sup. <laughs> yep, yeah, he can hear you. We're glad to have you on. What's he saying? Oh, good time. Yes. Well, yeah, I'm definitely. sure, I don't know, I'm getting this kind of, I'm getting some vibes. We could hear some good stuff out of this guy. <laughs> um, you know, it's been awesome because you are sharing all of the really cool, great things to set up a campaign, the four important things to do in order to get one moving or get mm -hmm. it going. Um, would you mind sharing with us, you know, for those ha that have never been involved or have heard a lot about viral campaigns, what are the things that we shouldn't do? Oh, nice. <laughs> um, what are the things you shouldn't do? Well, one thing you shouldn't do is ignore what, what, what's happening here um, because, because you can continue getting your, the results you're getting or you can do better. And it's really, really hard to mess it up. You can only do better. So that's one thing not to do is to ignore what's, what, what you're hearing. Um, then maybe, maybe you're asking, like, how can you mess certain things up? Um, well, I already said it's hard to mess things up. But one thing you can do is um, if you complicate it. And that's one of my biggest challenges. Mm -hmm. um, so when you're creating a viral campaign, like, and I don't, I don't think that this is a bad idea, but one, maybe an example of this is you go to people's blog, you see all these, you get, you see a hundred options to, to share the post. Now, if you have that, you know, don't stop doing that. But that's kind of the examples that I'm talking about is like over, over like giving people too many choices, right. confuse people. And those, those are a couple things that I can think of, of how you can mess it up. But like I said, this is, this viral marketing multiplies your efforts. It's hard to have viral campaigns, you know, subtract from your efforts. So, and that's one... I don't know, being cool with it, just being cool about what you're giving away, not like being overly aggressive, that tends to have a negative effect. Um, giving away something that isn't free, you need to give something super high value. In fact, the more value you get, you give the, the higher chances it's going to spread. You know, stuff like that. That's one of the reasons we you know, like you so much. No. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You, you walk the walk. You don't just talk the talk. You 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 epitomize everything you just talked about. Uh, we've known you long enough. We've seen your products, and like I said, from the inside <laughs> out. And you are you are the epitome of what you're just saying. You keep everything simple. Uh, very clean, very, I mean, it's, your websites are clean and simple. It's like, I know exactly where to go, what to do next, um, because you've made it that simple. And because it's so simple, I'm like, wow, I'm going to do this. And so everything you're saying is absolutely correct. You are a man of integrity, so the things you give away that are of great value are truly of great value, especially for those that act on and use those things you're giving out. That's another mistake I think some people make is, you know, if they get something for free, that's how they value it, and they may not do anything with it. But you gave them some. Well, you know what value. I think it is, Brian. Sometimes when people see free, they are so worried there's something. Yeah. There's got to be a catch or something behind it, right. and it, it sounds like for for a viral program to work like this, it needs to be a great free product, high value, high content. So that's a great point to let everybody know. Just because you see it and it's free does not necessarily mean that there's something behind it. You're, you're actually getting a phenomenal product. Yeah, and I'll actually tell maybe a brief story about that. I'm not the type of guy, like you ask any of my friends or families, I'm the type of guy that's considered 